So I wanted to talk real quick, make a quick video about Unfinity. There's a new unset coming out and everyone on the internet is fighting and arguing about it. They're starting to preview cards and the set is due out next month. It is an unset, which means that it's not technically a full legal set. But they have decided to allow some particular cards um, into what are called uh, non-rotating formats, legacy formats, eternal formats, which include stuff like Commander, uh, Legacy, um, Vintage, I believe. Um, hold on, let me just clarify. Eternal formats magic. Eternal formats are vintage legacy commander and popper. Okay, so popper counts as well. Um and the internet's kind of pissed about everything on this list because people don't like fun, I guess. Um and I don't know that my opinion is very different from some of them, but it's also a little bit more particular with how uh, much time you waste criticizing this kind of thing. Um, Unsets have been around since the 90s. It's a love letter from Mark Rosewater, who creates these weird, quirky sets, basically invented because he wanted to find a way to make weird magic cards that you would never be able to find anywhere else. Um, do things with cards that he would never get the permission to do in a normal set. So he made unsets, which are slapstick. They're weird. They bring real life in a lot. Your game surroundings. Um, and Unfinity, this next un unset, is the next in a long line of unsets. There's been, I believe, seven now with the release of Unfinity. Um, and they're all weird. But it's literally just a random product that you're supposed to play with, have fun. You can play with them if you want. You can ignore them if you want. You don't have to partake in every magic set especially sets that aren't of the core release lineup and i think people lose track of that a lot it's the same these are the same people who are you know arguing about 40k or fortnite cards or you know lord of the rings it's they want their serious fake universe to be left intact uh without any outside influence making it less serious and they kind of miss the point of having a fun card game that we all get to enjoy and and find some identity in and make friends around and and have fun with i think that the the key identifying factor is that these cards are designed to play a game that is fun and people's fun are different one person to the next and that is a very integral mindset to keep when you know partaking in a fandom i think there's a lot of fandoms that you know get lost in the sauce because we're so worried about oops um we're so worried about th things like Uh, you know, integrity of lore or universe or, um, you know, shit that doesn't matter. Hold on one second. I need to find my... There we go. Okay, why is that way over there? Also, why is my other camera turned on? There we go. 
Uh, nope, not that. Card preview. There we go. I'll probably turn off the... Uh, no, it's fine. So, again, we'll we'll go through some of these cards. At the end of the day, like, you don't have to fucking like any of them. You don't have to... If someone brings an Unfinity deck, an Attractions deck, for instance, to your Commander game night, and they say, hey, can I play with my Attractions deck? You have all the right in the world to say no they have all the right in the world to then walk away and find someone who will. But there has to be a line of how much you're willing to critique something that is designed for fun, built in a fun environment, and brings you know, joy and entertainment to millions of people. Who cares if a set comes out and it's not for you? If you... There's so many different ways to enjoy Magic the Gathering that you know, if you're a standard player, pay attention to the standard sets. The sets that are legal and standard. The rotating block. That's, that's kind of all. If you play Commander, you're going to see weird stuff and people are going to bring weird things that you've never seen before. Um... And Unfinity just adds a few more weird, quirky things to that pile. If you're, like, pay... Give devotion and pay attention to the things that impact your style of Magic the Gathering. People are upset that these weird, quirky cards are going to be legal in Legacy. And it's really not a big deal especially right now like these set these cards aren't even out yet and magic the gathering twitter is like lighting itself on fire because people have such strong opinions on something they've never even played with this stuff may seem stupid or silly on the surface when you're reading it on a website but who knows what it actually plays like i think we have to remove some of that bullshit from our thought process and understand that you know we're not looking at this holistically in five years does any of the infinity cards see normal play in you know legacy or popper who knows so why are we wasting so much time arguing with one another on the fucking internet about it um that's my take it's it's really about preference on on the surface, I'm, you know, I wish that Unfinity or these unsets remained uh, what they call Silver Border, which means that they're not legal in formats outside of Silver Border. Um, you know, you draft them, you play them, you have fun, it's weird. And then we go back to the normal gamut of Magic cards. The idea that if there is a tournament at a, you know, Worlds or, you know, a PTQ or something competitive that has a legacy format in it on, you know, Friday night or Saturday to qualify for day two, you know, the fact that you might see Unfinity cards makes me feel weird a little bit. It's a weird... It's These cards are designed to take the piss out of Magic the Gathering, both players and, you know, environments and design space. So having those kind of things be legal in a format that does sometimes, not very often, see a competitive environment um, is the only part about it that makes me feel weird but taking a step back you exhale a little bit and you're just like this shit isn't for me i don't care i'm not interested in weird and wacky things that break 
the mold of what Magic the Gathering is. I appreciate what I appreciate. And everything else doesn't have to tickle my fancy. There are people out here who are super excited about Infinity and Godspeed to them. It looks interesting. There's some cool, fun little things in this set that have been revealed so far. And who am I to cast any sort of negative critique on what they could consider really fun? I just know that in October, I'm going to be playing standard more and counting down the days until Worlds and having fun in that environment. But that's because that's the part of Magic the Gathering I like the most. That, that has zero weight on what part of Magic the Gathering you like the most, how you're allowed to judge anyone else for whatever part of Magic the Gathering they like the most. It's just simply not your fucking place. So, if you watch this, or you're in chat right now, or you see this on YouTube in a week, whatever, just next time you see something you disagree with, just take a fucking breath and either applaud that person for celebrating something that they find fun, or leave it the fuck alone. Um, yeah, that was a very long-winded way of saying, eh, this stuff isn't for me. But let's quickly take a tiny peek, just a tiny peek. I'm not going to hang on everything. We're not going to go through every card. Um, this is a new mechanic called Attractions. It's an artifact type. And basically what it is, is you have a second deck. If you're drafting attractions, you need to have, I believe, at least three or four attractions drafted in order to play an attractions deck. In, con in, a, in a constructed environment, you can have a, an a attraction deck of 10, I believe, or more. And what it does is it sits outside the game. When you have a card that says, open an attraction, then you shuffle your attractions deck, you draw an attraction, and that's the attraction you play. There are cards. Let me see if I can find one, actually, real quick. Um, ba -ba 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 -da. Choose to open an attraction. So opening an attraction is, again, like I said, you um, pull... You open, shuffle your attraction deck, flip open the the first one. That's you opening an attraction. You have attractions off, off to the side of the board. They are not included in the main board. And then when you visit an attraction, there will be many cards that say visit an attraction. Um, what you do is you roll a six-sided die. And if your die lands on any of the lit up numbers here on the side then you get to trigger whatever the attraction says so this one fortune teller you have a 50 50 chance of getting i believe all of the attractions hit on a six so if you have like 10 attractions all lined up um on your board and you roll a six you're gonna have a ton of triggers it'll be gas uh it'll be a ton of fun um so if you roll a 2, a 3, or a 6, you get to visit Fortune Teller, which means you scry one. It's just little tiny increment things like that. Um, this is a little... Oh, okay, there we go. So limited attraction decks need to be a minimum of 3. Constructed, constructed no more than 1 with the same name and a ma minimum of 10. So you can, it's a singleton attraction deck, basically. And, you know, there's a number of attractions. And I'm sure it's going to get weird. Like all um, unsets have in the past. I will point out that this is my favorite card that has been revealed out of all these cards so far. Attempted Murder. 
It has this cool looking crow who's sticking out his leg to trip this waiter. And it's two black black and X for a sorcery. Choose target creature, roll X, six sided dice. For each even result, put two minus one minus one counters on that creature. For each odd result, create a one two blue bird creature token with flying named Stormcrow. So either one is positive, but you could, if you roll a bunch of even results, then you could kill, um, you know, something really large. And I just think that's fun. Attempted murder is is a silly play on, you know, obviously the murder card that's also too black. It's too black black for murder. And, or one black black. Yeah. It's one black black for murder. And it's it's kind of just a standard staple. It comes in and out with with sets. Usually there's one reprint a year. It's just a thing you always see in black. Um, I'm not going to go through everything else. There's another funny one, Lifetime Pass Holder. Kind of, so the theme around Unfinity is this like space amusement park. Hence the attractions. Um, hence all the uh, astronaut sci-fi stuff. Um, this Lifetime Pass Holder is one black for a zombie guest. Lifetime Pass Holder enters the battlefield tapped, like all good 2-1 zombies do. And when Lifetime Pass Holder dies, open an attraction. When you roll to visit your attractions, if you roll a 6, you may return Lifetime Pass Holder from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's a fun little card. Um... Trying to think of anything else I wanted to... Oh, there's Affinity for Clowns. Hell of fun. Um, Vorthos, Steward of Myth. So this is like a play on that kind of Timmy, Tommy um, character profiling that Magic did a while back. Um, what else is there? There's some, there's some fun little, fun little things in these cards. This comet. Oh, right. I didn't actually designate what is, um, eternal legal or not. But we all know that a normal magic card has, um, the hollow foil stamp thing on the bottom anything that's rare or mythic um anything that's not just chaff has a foil stamp on it what they've decided to do with this unset is that anything with an acorn on it is not is only legal in unsets unfinity um, or if you play like an undraft, whatever. Acorn means not eternal legal. Normal foil oval means eternal legal. So stuff like Comet, Stellar Pup, which is an interesting planeswalker. It is a Boros. Two and a Boros. Um, it comes in with five loyalty and that's zero is its only loyalty ability. Roll a six-sided die. If you roll a one or a two, um, plus, I cannot read that. If you roll a one or a two, plus one on its loyalty, then create two one-one green squirrel tokens. They gain haste until end of turn. If you roll a three, you minus one. Return a card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to your hand if you roll a four or five comet deals damage equal to the number of loyalty counters on him to a creature or player then minus one or if you roll a six you plus one and you may activate comet stellar pups loyalty ability two more times this turn so it's a bit of a random uh randomization on Planeswalker loyalties, which is kind of fun. Uh, there's another one here, Space Bellerin. 
obviously a play on Jace's name. Um, this one has stirred up a lot of conversation online because he has this ability called Space Sculptor. Um, Space Bellerin divides the battlefield into alpha, beta, and gamma sectors. So basically three sectors kind of going from one person to the opponent. Three sectors. Um, if a creature isn't assigned to a sector, its controller assigns it to one. Opponents assign first. And then it has a plus one ability. Creatures in each sector can can be blocked this turn only by creatures in the same sector. Minus one, put a one one counter on each creature in the sector of your choice. Or minus five, destroy all creatures in the sector of your choice. So it's an interesting way to split up the battlefield. Um, very awkward, but also kind of interesting. Um, yeah, and then we've got a, a bunch of attractions. We've got some that each player draws a card from the library of the player on their right. Create three treasure tokens. Um, the clown extruder. If you visit, create a 1-1 one, one clown robot artifact creature token. Uh, concession stand. Create a food token. Costume shop. You may put a sticker on a non-land permanent. Now, stickers is another thing that they've added. I don't know if it's on this sheet. Um, but basically, you have a list of stickers. You have a card that has stickers on it, and the stickers include, like, names. Um, let me see if I can find them real quick. Unfinished sticker stickers. Let's just do that. Um, so here we go, yeah. So sticker sheets have a bunch of different types of stickers on them. There's name stickers, there's art stickers, and then there's stuff like power and toughness stickers. Then you've got keyword stickers. Um, and this gets triggered... Um, Whenever Bioluminary deals combat damage to a player, you get two tickets. Then you may put a sticker on a non-land permanent you control. So it's kind of like energy, where you build up energy over the course of a game. And then when you trigger something that says you may put a sticker on a non-land permanent you own, you get to look at your sticker sheets. And again, you have like a side deck of sticker sheets, which I believe you can see all, you're allowed to look at all of them at once. Um... And then depending on how many stickers you have, you can buy a sticker of meaningful substance or you can put a name and or art sticker on your card. And basically this changes the way some of the Infinity cards interact. There's cards that call out for pirates. There's cards that call out for hats. There's cards that call out for you know, having quotes on the art. There's lots of different situations that you might find yourself in. Um, and then you, if you wanted to pay, you can pay for the keywords or pay to change your creature's power and toughness. Again, a, a really difficult kind of design space. And I applaud them for being clever enough to put all of that together. Because that can't be easy. The last thing is the full art lands. Every unset has something special when it comes to the full art lands. Um, almost all of the unsets full art lands are completely sought after. They're, you know, $20 or more sometimes. And Unfinity is no exception. It takes place in space, so there's obviously a space theme going on. These are some of the coolest looking full art lands you've ever seen. 
um, the ones not marked with the Infinity logo are a little bit more realistic, a little bit more Doomsayer. These are all Adam Paquette, fantastic magic artist. Um, even these weird, like those look like blueberries. It's so weird. So these alien ones are one thing, and then you've got this realistic... I mean, obviously it's not realistic because these planets don't exist, but um, a more realistic version of planets. Or maybe these are the, the planets themselves, like, on the surface, and then these are the planets from outside of atmosphere. Interesting. Anyway, these are stunning... I think these are going to be a lot of people's main land setup for quite a while. I I can't wait to see these in person actually. I f I feel like they're just going to be great some of the colors on these. Can't imagine. They've been doing such a good job with the lands lately that I can only imagine that those ones are going to be real nice. Now, I don't know why we're looking, why there's four versions. Oh, these all have different roll triggers. Weird. All right. I guess that varies it up a bit. Anyway, that's a really quick overview on Infinity. A really tired opinion on people enjoying shit that you might not like and you know letting people have their fun let people enjoy shit that you might not enjoy